I am one of the consultants for the Connecticut Parent Advocacy Center, and with me is Vanessa, another parent consultant who is monitoring the chat. So again, welcome to Transition Tuesdays, and we will be putting the PowerPoint in the chat at various times during the evening. So we are a relatively smallish group, so feel free to put your questions into the chat. And if you have any questions that really need to be answered, you can just unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, we will try to get to the questions as we go. So let me share my PowerPoint. I just put in a PowerPoint on our chat, the PowerPoint as well, or anybody that needs it. Excellent. Thank you. And can everybody see this? Yes. OK, you can still see it? Yes. OK, is it big enough for everybody? I cannot see anybody, so. That's good, the way it is now, I think. OK, excellent. OK. So again, my name is Laura and welcome to Transition to Adulthood and Employment. So who is CPAC? For almost 40 years, Connecticut's federally funded parent training information center. So we are the PTI for Connecticut. We are statewide and we are a nonprofit organization that offers information and support related to special education and 504. My, so I am Laura and I have five children, several, several of them have IEPs and 504 plans, ranging from mental health to very complex medical needs uh, and everything in between. And I have been officially with CPAC for three and a half years now. And Vanessa, if you wanna introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Vanessa. I also um, work for CPAC as a parent consultant. I have two children. Uh, one with IP and one with 504, one with autism, one with medical, not super complex, but medical issues. And I um, work with CPAC. I speak Portuguese and some Spanish. So if anybody here that needs have any sp Spanish questions, I'm not perfect, but I can help. <laughs> so, and that's it. Okay. So we are funded through several different um, agencies and entities. So we are funded through the Connecticut State Department of Education, the Office of Early Childhood, the US Department of Education, the DS Act and the Family School Partnership. So CPAC's mission is to educate and support and empower Connecticut's families of children with, youth, with disabilities and chronic conditions from birth to age 26 and the professionals who serve them. So, and anybody who calls us, we are happy to answer your questions. So our vision is that all families have the confidence and knowledge and understanding they need to effectively advocate for their children and to partner with professionals to ensure that their children grow up and learn to their fullest potential. So this evening we'll be uh, learning about WIOA, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, and just doing a, a pretty much a brief overview of it and how it relates to transition planning. A brief review of um, Individuals with Disabilities Act, IDEA, and the current transition page of the Individual Education Program. Connecticut is coming out with a new um, IEP, but we will be doing, probably in August, we'll see PAC will do another um, training on uh, the transition pages or the sections of the new IEP. And our, lastly, our objective is to provide resources and strategies to help students, parents, teachers, and adult service providers play an active role in the transition process. Okay, so what is WIOA, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act? There was an amendment to the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 and part of the responsibility goes to the Vocational Rehabilitation Agency or the VR agency, and part of it goes to the Department of Labor, but we're gonna be focusing on the Vocational Rehabilitation Agency. So it emphasizes pr providing services to students and youth with disabilities to ensure that they have opportunities, receive training to gain employment and expand the number of students who receive services. So the whole focus is workforce development. 
And keeping all of this in mind, there's nothing in WIOA that should be interpreted as reducing the local education agencies or the school districts obligation to provide services under special education. So vocational rehabilita rehabilitation agencies require to partner with other state agencies and to provide workplace uh, learning opportunities through internships and other age and other opportunities. So they might partner with other state agencies, community providers, and they're also co coordinated the delivery of pre-employment transition services with the local school districts. So that is one of the right mandates. They do need to partner with the local school districts. And currently our vocation and rehabilitation agency is called Level Up. And we'll, I'll explain a little bit more about them later on in the presentation. So let's take, take a deeper look at the definitions. Under a student with disability, the education programs includes high school students, alternative placements and homeschooling, post-secondary education and training programs, educational programs to the juvenile justice. So it's any student that's in, in some sort of educational pro program. And you have to meet the age requirements and for a level up, it is 16 through 20, up to the 22nd birthday at this point in time. Um, they have to be receiving some sort of special education or some sort of disability. So they just need to have a disability documented. And they could have a 504 plan or, or beyond uh, an IEP. So youth with a disability, is someone who is not older, younger than age 14, but not, not older than 24 years old. So it just expands that, that definition for students who may not be, for um, those who may not be a student, excuse me. And actually, whoops, I'm sorry, I just went too far ahead. So this is a link to the actual codes if anyone's interested in looking at those. So, Transition related services. It's a continuum of services. And we're, we're looking at pre employment services. We'll be further on in the PowerPoint, we'll be discussing what trans, pre employment trans, transition services are. But for right now, you can think of it as the on ramp to work. What they need is it's the simply the earliest set of services provided to a student with a disability. What do they need to learn to work? And it's only available for students with disabilities. And you do not need to apply for the uh, VR agency level up. You just need to be referred. So they also have group transition services. So it's available to a group of students and young, young adults with disabilities. And again, you do not need to have an application and be approved for services. You just need to be referred. So an example of what a group service would be, would be towards a vocational programs, business locations to learn about careers, job fairs, things like that. And through the continuum of services, it goes all the way up to actual individual services. And that is available to all individuals, but they have to apply and be approved and deemed eligible for, love, for the VR program, which is um, level up and under the Bureau of Rehabilitation. So again, I'll get into that a little bit later and show you what the structure is for level up. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Not yet. Okay. So pre-employment transition services. Again, these are services that are an early start to job exploration that assist students with identifying career interests to be further explored, must be made available statewide to all students with disabilities in need of such services, regardless of whether the student has officially applied and been approved for that uh, voc vocational rehabilitation agency. So these are the five right here. These are the five areas where the, where the VR agency assists. And all they need is a documentation of a disability. I, again, I, IEP, a 504 plan, some, a medical provider stating that the student or the person has a disability. And they all must be arranged, all five, they must be arranged with in collaboration with a local school district. Okay. 
We have one quick question, Laura. Yeah, absolutely. Who we, who refer you in the district for level up? I assume that you're just talking yes. about. Well, you you can self refer, but you also and again, I, I actually have those steps later on in the slide and the contacts. You can self refer. The student can call. The parent can call. But typically, it's through the school district. And I, I have a tickle in my throat and fighting a little bit of a cough, so I apologize if I if I have to stop and take a, a sip of water or something. So if you don't understand me because my voice is um, scratchy, just please ask again. So here's level one services. So they are found under the Department of Aging and Disability Services. So that's kind of like their umbrella agency and it's through the Bureau of Rehabilitation Services. So the adults really receive services through, through the um, BRS. And then you have level up, which really is focusing on students. So it's kind of a three-tiered system. So level up services may include peer mentoring, which works in a small groups and they learn how to identify skills, personal strengths, likes, dislikes, social skills, and life goals. And then there's self-advocacy, which helps them identify resources that can be found within the family, the community, and the school system that can help prepare them for future employment, education, and training. So in a group, they might learn about self-advocacy rights and how to re request accommodations and communicate their concerns or needs. On the individual level, it might be mentoring with employees, um, educational staff, partnering in um, participating rather in youth leadership activities. Through work-based learning experiences, these are short-term and they earn minimum wage and it's an introduction to work. So it's kind of like that team first job, if you will. And it's to help maintain competitive employment. The whole goal is to have individuals competitively employed. So in a group, it might be classroom teacher, like financial literacy, job search skills, that sort of thing, resumes. And then the individual, these skills are developed and tailored to a student's specific needs. So the same skill might be taught in a group, but what they're receiving is specifically designed for them. And assistive, assistive technology, so learn about the technology that's available to help the individual succeed in work, school, and in the community. So career and job exploration, the student explores and understands their interests, skills, and works, work values through career assessment tools while learning all about the labor market, employment options, and potential career pathways, and counseling for post-secondary education, embraces lifelong learning through exploration of college and our training opportunities available after high school, and informational uh, in the individual setting that might be advising parents or students about expe academic expectations of in the curriculum of college application or the admission process, FAFSA student, they might be sharing something about the student disability services. And in a group setting, it might be uh, types of academical, academic and vocational training needed opportunities in the career fields, things of that nature. So informational interviews are exploring the student's interests that may meet with professionals or work in a career field to learn firsthand what the jobs of the industry might entail and is to gain contact and build relationships, thinking about networking. So job shadowing experience are directly observed of what happens in the workplace by shadowing a professional with, within their identified area of interest. So who, what, where, and when? <laughs> so when uh, you wanna contact Level Up Services. So any student potentially eligible for services ages 16, 16 through the age of 21, stopping, you know, it's, any services would cease at age 22 of their 22nd birthday. So who, who may have an IEP, a 504 or documented disability. So they want to the, speak to the high school special education teacher, one of the counselors, or you can contact, they do have level up um, contacts at the high school and, and names that the student can also call or the family can call, but typically it is through the high school. And the best time to connect is um, two years prior to graduation or exiting special education services. I have one question, Laura. Sure, absolutely. 
Um, one person asked, their son is a senior and will be entering the AIM program in Islam. And they ask if this is similar to level up. That's a great question. Um, it's, it's, that is run through a different agency. So that although they may do similar things, it, I don't, you can always still contact uh, the Bureau of Rehabilitation Level Up Services. And once um, that individual is looking at adult services or potentially adult services, they would have to apply officially to through the BRS and Level Up to see if they qualify for services. But it's always important to do because there's always budget, staff, staff shortages, things of that nature. And if they um, have to go to a wait list or things of that, at least the name is your name's in. Hope that answered your question. Any more questions or? No, not yet. Okay. Is there anything in place after 22? Or are we going to get to that? Um, for, for employment and you can always receive support from uh, the BR Rehabilitation Services at any time. You would just need to contact them. They would have to go through that application process and interview process and then help support. So individuals who need more supports, it's going to be, you're going to be going that route. Okay. So the, so with level up, it's really that pre-employment, that, that beginning of exploration of work. Okay, so why is it important to work? Traditionally, employment has been the main method people use to achieve self-sufficiency and maintain connections to the community. It's important to hold high expectation for people with disabilities to be employed. Society may not always hold the same expectation as we know, but there are some points to emphasize and discuss the value of employment. So these are the, the points that I'll be talking about, I'll be right here. So a feeling of worth of contributing to society, people often define their contribution to the world around them through the work they do. They contrib contribute and their contributions may be to work at a job that seems meaningful, to be a part of a team, or simply just provide for the ones that you love. Meaningful days is what is the reason for waking up in the morning? Often the answer is to go to work. Um, without employment, people with disabilities may struggle to give structure to their days. Families need to consider what their youth will do as an adult and to give meaning to their life. And it's not only employment, but since we're talking about employment, that's what we're, um, that's what I mentioned, but there's many reasons that give meaning to life, many things. So a place to learn social skills and responsibility. The workplace is often an opportunity for young people to learn how to be responsible and interact with others appropriately. Work direction is given by someone other than a parent or youth part of a team. Often uh, youth don't always take what parents say as literal or want to listen to what parents say. Um, so it might be received differently if someone on the employment agency or another youth and who they're employed with guides them. We have one comment, Laura. Sure. I don't think it's not a question, okay. uh, but they, they said there might also be services available through the American Job Center. Mm -hmm. located throughout the state for all students who are out of school, both, yes. both with and without disabilities, services to help with job training, resumes, writing, and job search, search assistancy. Yes, and that's part when the beginning, when I talked about WIOA, that's kind of how it's funneled when we're talking about students, but yes, and thank you for that. American Job Centers is a great place to, to gain all these skills. Where was I? So it's also a way to combat isolation, loneliness, and depression. Once a youth with disability leaves high school, so often they lose touch with peers and friends, and many adults with disabilities may struggle. You feel isolating and depressed because they're not connected to a social network. So employment can help this. Um, and I know a lot of people felt the same way during COVID that there was that break in that social connection and it really, it does affect people. So a role in the adult world in our society is that adults are expected to go to work. Um, you think about, you know, when the last time you met someone in a social situation, when chances are the first question that you may have asked is like, so who are you? What do you do? Um, 
So we need to expect that all people can work if they wish to. So if you think about your own employment experience, you know, think about some of the positive ways it impacted you, what you learned from it. And also think about with your young adults, your youth, um, what, what do you hope they gain from being employed? What kind of skills do you want them to develop? Okay. So getting to the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. So the key purpose is to prepare students for further edu education, employment, and independent living. Nothing under the WIOA should um, be interpreted as reducing the uh, school district's obligation to provide the services, the employment services under IDEA. So just because they might be connected to Level Up doesn't mean it relieves the school district of their oblig obligation to provide services under that special education. So Level Up would work in tandem and work in collaboration with the school district. So why career planning? So to avoid poor job matches, having a career planning discussion with youth can be valuable for many reasons. It helps families and schools and level up or other um, folks working with that individual learn about how the youth is thinking about employment. So what if they hope, what do they hope for and what their kinds of jobs might interest them? This information can be, once you find out that information, it can be communicated to the school districts, to the work, work experience staff, or an employment service provider. Level up and to, and to ensure uh, you are, your youth are placed in jobs that match their skills and their interests. It has also improved transition or employment. For many youth with disabilities, the high school years is a time to prepare for the adult world. In the individualized education program, the IEP is kind of the roadmap of how to prepare for this. You know. They can use this knowledge gained from the career planning to discuss and identify academic coursework, skills needed, or the work experience that can be integrated into the youth's IEP. And many adult service providers also utilize a plan to guide that person's programming, whether it's a plan for high school or employment or the adult service world, families need to ask if the person writing the plan knows enough about their son or daughter, and if not, or, and also the, the folks working with that individual need to ask themselves, do we have enough information? Do we need more assessments? Transition assessments are ongoing and should be done <laughs> throughout the high school, not just one and done. So you can have assessments for career readiness, interest, interest inventory, soft skills, which is communication, work ethic, teamwork, time management, all those skills. And families need to use their knowledge and expertise as part of the planning process, but especially the student, they need to be included and their voice needs to be heard. So youth beginning to think about work, what if through these discussions you find out that um, the youth isn't interested in working or thinks they don't have to work. So it's better to catch this early so that you, so if the youth has this idea in their head that they can, that was working with them can develop ways to show the youth that this is important and to, um, and that the work is needed and vocalize career goals and, and that seem unattainable for families or providers they can steer the youth in the right direction. But the caveat to that is to let them explore, even if it seems unrealistic, they might find out that they do not want to do that specific job, but there was something about that job that they wanted or they liked. So for example, if somebody wants to become a registered nurse, but you, the school district, the parent, the family, whomever feels like that's unattainable, that it's not something they can do, still let that youth explore because they might find out, oh, I really don't want to do this. I don't like, you know, drawing blood or it's too hard for me. Or really what I liked about it was I like to wear scrubs and I really liked helping people. So there might be something else in the field where you can wear scrubs and help, whether it's a, a CNA, someone who's taken the blood pressure, a receptionist, something of that nature. So it is important to let them explore it. So don't shortchange them just to say, I don't think you can do it. Therefore, we're not gonna explore this job or this career. So this brings us to career planning that allows for goals and setting for the identification of the steps to reach that goal. For example, if a youth wants a job 
caring for animals, families can take this knowledge to the IEP team so that they can begin learning about jobs that meet that criteria. Classes can be put into place so the youth can build skills such as biology. They can also seek work experiences or volunteer opportunities so that they can experience that work firsthand. So even if the youth follows these steps and then they continue on to work in the animal services industry, they you know, might get a job and be explored with job placements and post-secondary programs to help support that. And the level of work will be in combination with the schools in these goals and the work exploration and work experience in developing those skills. That was a mouthful, so. And this is a great resource. Um, for all these things that we discussed and in doing inventories and, and career exploration. Any questions so far? Yes, we have one, Laura. <clears throat> Excuse my voice too. Yeah, uh, I know, so, it's going around. <laughs> so why do level up if you are getting the same thing through the AIM 18 to 22 program? You might both, not. Both, can they do both? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes school districts, they have a pretty robust employment program and they may not use level up services. And I've, I've worked with families that have done both. I've worked with families that just use the school district and it was per perfectly fine. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, so- Thank you. You're welcome. So post- secondary outcome goals statements. It, um, that's a little bit of change that we'll be seeing. So instead of post-school outcome goal statements, they're now calling it post-secondary outcome goal statements. So one of them must be related to employment. So there must be a, a post-school outcome goal statement on the IEP related to employment. So you can use career readiness and employment standards to help to create these goals or the um, Connecticut transition course skills to help um, with these goals and the objectives. Um, so there's many different things that can help develop those, that, those statements. So once you have the post-secondary outcome goal statement, you need to have an annual goal and objectives related to that post-secondary outcome goal statement. So I'm gonna give you an example. Um, and again, everything's gonna be uh, based on post-secondary, uh, the transition assessments that is ongoing. Okay, so it's also gonna be related to the present levels of performance. So after completing courses at community college, Jane will be employed full-time at a human services as a human services worker or other related fields. So that would be the post-secondary outcome goal statement. And then the annual goal might be given small group instru instruction, Jane will demonstrate skills to access identified employment options of her choice. And for using the Connecticut core transition skills, and these resources are um, towards the bottom of uh, the end of the PowerPoint. So by using the Connecticut core transition skills, it is M, which states demonstrate skills to access appropriate employment to meet his or her individual needs. So the objectives might be given to job shadow experiences to human different services positioning positions. Jane will identify her likes and dislikes of each setting by completing a job site interest survey and verbally describing her preferences before the end of the third quarter. Or an objective could be given role playing opportunities and direct instruction on communicating with supervisors during workplace emergency, Jane will verbally state the emergency to tell her supervisor that she needs help, that help is needed, and she, using a calm voice three out of four trials in three consecutive weeks by the end of the third quarter. It could be in the, in the community work setting or during school-based learning opportunities, Jane will learn and apply five job skills needed to maintain employment, such as punctuality, Call out procedures, request for leave, et cetera, with eight, 90% independence, four out of five opportunities. So, those are just some examples. Um, and again, you can use the career readiness and employment standards, ONET, um, the Connecticut core transition skills to help write these. So, just think of the annual goal that's going to assist the student with being prepared to achieve the post secondary goals. 
Okay, any questions on that? And I just really briefly went over that. Okay. Not yet. So the agency also needs to be, so if Level Up is working with that student, they need to be invited to the PPT meeting. Um, and if they're not coming, the reasons why or why they weren't invited or any agency that is working with that individual, they need to be invited to the PPT meeting. And if I'm using any acronyms because I slip into it rather easily, just please stop me and ask me what I mean. So career planning it doesn't always have to be a complicated process full of tests and evaluations. So career planning can be a process by just youth, or the, the youth or disability with a disability discusses the type of jobs they're interested in and how their disability might impact those interests. So a family can set aside time with, with their youth and ask them some key questions. These are some of the key questions. What's your dream job? What do you need? to know about that job, how does your disability impact you? How do you think your disability would impact you? So you can utilize the school and the service providers level up in the, in all, in the families to help achieve those, those uh, employment ideas and interests. Okay. So volunteering, why is volunteering a good idea? So besides the school and besides Level Up or other services, studies show that youth who have quality work experience during the high school years are more likely to experience positive employment outcomes as adults. The best work experience is actually paid employment that we know. And volunteering is not a long-term solution. So how can youth build their experiences if they can list it on their resume without actually having a job, the one strategy is volunteering. So again, it's not an accessible long-term substitute for paid employment. We don't want youth to be funneled in to uh, volunteering because then agencies might start using a lot of volunteers so they don't have to pay people. And it's not, it's yes, they're gaining skills, but the goal is we want them to be competitively employed. So again, during the interviews, it's, it would be important to say, no, I wasn't, I didn't have a paid job, but yes, I volunteered at this agency and these are the skills that I, that I gained. So it shows employers that the youth wanna work and can demonstrate skills. And there's a number of opportunities that the youth can, can take to volunteer in their community. And again, the benefit is great. and try several experiences, um, not just one, because when you allow them to try many different jobs, it just makes it easier to focus on a specific career pathway that they may wanna follow. Of course, as you know, with any student in high school, their interests change many, many times and let them explore, let them figure it out. I'm still trying to figure out what I wanna do in life. So we're still working on that. Any questions? No, yeah, in the chat. Okay. I do, you know what, I did forget to share. I'm gonna to try to share something um, as far as some um, tools to help with that career exploration and IEP building. I'm gonna see if I can do this. So give me one moment. Okay, can everybody see that? All right, so this is just like an employability rubric and it just talks about different skills. Um, and that is a good way to have a conversation with the young adult, with the youth and, you know, and to look at these skills, demonstrates respectful behavior, listens and understands and appreciates the points, views of others. There's, it, it's, it's a long, long page, but it just goes, it, various different employability skills. Okay, that's one. And then. And here is another one. Looking at the groundwork, it, you know, was there interest assessments? 
Is there a post-secondary goal worksheet? Just different tools that educators and families, if they have them, can look over and just be to be, help them be, become prepared. So talking about self-advocacy. I just wanted to quickly share those with you. Okay. Okay, back to families. So parents can help career planning process by sharing their knowledge and the youth strengths it went interest with the, the team, the school team, the level up team. So going back to that animal example. So the parents might know that their young adult, their youth may love to work with animals, but they have a fear of confined or small spaces. So that would cause their, their, their child to be anxious. Um, this information can be shared with staff. So when they're looking at different careers, okay, maybe we don't want an area with good confined, maybe it'll be like a farm or some other outdoor experience working with animals. And parents also tend to catch signs early if there's an issue with the job or that causes um, this, the, their young adult stress or there's any different issues and solutions that might be, um, be brought up, you know, they might have ideas and they can tell the, the, the school or level up or who's ever working with that individual. These are the things that I'm seeing with this job placement. Here are some solutions. And parents can also teach soft skills. Um, these are the skills that are rooted in interpersonal communication and responsibility. For example, we always did chores around the house and that's a really great way to build these soft skills. And some other ways to build soft skills in the home is to include practicing doing a task and, and assigned time each week, dressing appropriately for certain occasions or having um, the youth plan a family meal, setting the table. These can help in developing time management skills, planning, and also you know, how to dress for a job or dress for a job in your view, it helps build those skills. And it's really important to have high expectations above, above all, always have high expectations. So if the family doesn't have high expectations for, for their child, then how will others have high expectations? So you know, all, all people can be employed and people with all types of disabilities can be in are quite successful in in the world of work so families should create a vision of their youth that maximizes the potential and shouldn't settle for any situation where they aren't teaching or reaching their potential we have one question laura yes and i just messed up my type sorry good when do, we, when do we contact the voc vocational he have through the state? Shouldn't they be involved in the process? Usually they get involved. Um, so level up services is usually two years before they graduate or they exit special education. So right around that 16, age 16 mark. But transition planning starts at age 14 with the, with the school district. So you're gonna be talking about these skills and developing some of these, these soft skills all along. Actually sooner, I would, have, I would suggest starting sooner. Don't wait to age 14, but that, that is currently what the Connecticut law says. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? No, that I don't see any more. There's also the Americans with Disability Act, and this law protects a person who is qualified for a job from being discriminated against due to, because of their disability. The person must satisfy the employer's requirement of the job, and they must be able to perform the essential functions of that job without reasonable accommodation. Um, that be, so with or without reasonable accommodation. So a reasonable accommodation might be a modified work schedule, providing interpreters or readers, um, just making the environment more accessible. So, and the employer cannot ask if, if you have a disability or the nature or severity of that disability. So that's just some more protections. Okay. 
and there is the guidepost, which is, so we're getting into some of the resources and the guidepost is an excellent resource. And here is the actual link to the PDF. So they look at five key areas, areas of school-based preparatory experiences, career preparation and workplace learning experiences, youth development, connecting activities, and family involvement. Right now, the National Collaborative on Workforce and Disability for Youth, their website isn't up right now because they have a whole plethora of um, service uh, resources and information. So hopefully that will be up soon. But in the meantime, we do have a link to the guideposts. Okay, and here are some of the state resources. Here's the Transition Bill of Rights in English and Spanish. And these are the Connecticut core transition skills that I spoke of earlier that you can help in writing the goals and objectives in the post-secondary outcome goal statements. Whoops. And building a bridge. Um, and stepping forward is really, it's an interactive self-advocacy toolkit for students. So these are all great resources and it's gonna be translated into Spanish hopefully by some point this year. I, I keep hearing soon, okay. And here's the US Department of Education on the transition guide. And these are just more resources, different um, transition resources and where to ex uh, explore careers and money management. And the same, and more resources. And here are the transition folio tracker and the employment skills, the rubric that I showed you. Okay, and then we did, this is just, just like a basic overview of it. And the community, the transition community of practice will be doing a transition Tuesday for regarding employment on April 26th. So they will have a panel and some guest speakers will go a little bit more into different job work experiences and employment. Um, and you can actually register and this is a direct link in our CPAC transition to adulthood is on our YouTube channel with all of our transition Tuesday um, that we've had so far starting last year. So the past year's worth. Okay, and I know we did this rather quickly. So are there any questions? I'm gonna stop sharing. Hold on. Hello. Hi. We're the AIM program people. We're the AIM program people. We just keep coming back to haunt you. So no, no, so that's AIM, okay. So Our son is more severely disabled, more more moderately disabled, I should say, and so he's he's eighteen, but he's probably six. Okay. <laughs> and so he doesn't know anything about you know vocational skills, and you know he's never had a job, and all of these things. So. We think that the AIM program is like good for him right now, just because it's kind sure. of dipping his toe in the water sure. of riding the bus. Like he just started riding mm -hmm. the bus and do you know what I mean? Just things like mm -hmm. that. So this kind of sounds like it might be a little bit further into his future, but we don't know if we're supposed right. to apply for it now, like you said, in case there's a waiting list or something. Well, so when you say he's, um, has more intensive needs. Is he qualified or have you applied for a Department of Developmental Services? Yeah, he, yes, we're getting SSI for him. We just started getting SSI. He has his, you know, his non-drivers, you know, DMV. We got the, um, we're, we have guardian of him now and um, we did the, um, what's the, the payee account and we're in, so we're just getting ready now to apply for Husky. Okay. Um, so we're going down the checklist of everything. And um, so this summer he'll be doing ESY with the AIM program. Mm -hmm. And then in the fall, he'll be going into the AIM program. Um, it's from nine to nine to two at okay. the middle school. Yeah. Gotcha. It's at the middle school? Yes. Okay. Um, so is the connected to develop? And this is getting into some personal information. So, I mean, yep. we can always talk That's offline. Okay. He, but... has a DDS, he has a DDS number and okay. we have a, okay. um, yeah, we have somebody that we work with that's gonna help us with the Husky and, mm -hmm. and everything like that. And then I right. just contacted one of the ladies there about the, um, cause it says 
participate in the level of need assessment and complete okay. an, an individual plan. So she said they're gonna work with us on, on that too. The uh, DDS is going to work? The, yes. Yeah. So they do, they do work in tandem with level up services. So they might actually do an assessment to see if your, your, your child can be gainfully employed. The goal is to know that even if with disabilities and intensive, dis, you know, more severe disability, the goal is to get them some sort of employment and competitive employment. Right. So they'll do yep. the assessment. And usually when DDS is the lead agency, they'll be doing some of the job placements and training, but, I th and, level up or BR, BRS will be doing the assessment. And we actually have on our transition Tuesdays, um, Amy from the level up services did go, had a pretty in intensive discussion about the level up services and how and what and where and why and how it's divided up between, you know, level up BRS and also um, Department of Labor, the American Job Centers. So you can always look okay. also look at that as well to get a little what bit do you, more what do you um, what do you recommend that that we do then on our part i mean do we should we just let him do the aim program and just you know mm -hmm. go with that if that's what's good for him or do we should is there something else that we um need to do Okay, you just froze on me a little bit, but I would definitely oh, sorry to the DDS worker. You can always reach yes. out to the, um, Level Up VR services to talk about how are we going to assess who's going to be doing what and how can we supplement and all work together. Okay, um, all right. program definitely sounds like it's it's a benefit. So, yeah. okay, good. All right, thank you very much. Anything? No, thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions or? I'm actually gonna launch the poll while we're taking questions. Oh, I can't launch the poll. Vanessa, can you launch the poll? It won't let me for some odd reason. I think because both of us are logged in possibly. Can you see it? I think I did. Okay. <laughs> I can see it. But so I'm wondering if Pat Anderson has any comments. Um, I'm calling you out, Pat. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> we are lucky because Pat was a few years ago the transition coordinator up at the State Department of Education. So she is a wealth of knowledge. So happy that you're here. Um, you covered a lot in terms of transition. Um, I think you know the i'm not that familiar with for example the aim program but um how old is your son i'm sorry he just turned 18 he okay. just turned 18 in september do you know if he's working on a high school diploma he is going to so the way they explained it to us is that um he will walk across the stage with his cap and gown in June with the rest of his class, but they'll withhold his diploma until he finishes the 18 to 22 program. Okay, but he is going to be receiving a diploma at some point. So he's in what we call transition only services, which if a student has met requirements for graduation, they can refuse the diploma and the district will provide them with transition only services. There is a section on the State Department of Ed's website under secondary transition services where it explains what transition only services are. Um, if he is a client of DDS, um, if he can be competitively employed at some point in time, then DDS is required to have him start working with BRS kind of in a level up way, but it's not actually the same kind of thing. Um, okay. But for somebody like your son, <clears throat> the other topic I would explore with the district, with DDS is something called um, customized employment. Mm. 
Okay. Customized employment um, helps individuals with more significant disabilities become competitively employed, which is ultimately what the goal of level up and BRS is. Okay. And I believe right now uh, the State Department of Ed, DDS, and BRS uh, are working together to train more providers throughout the state in terms of customized employment. <clears throat> so I would look it up, read a little bit about it, and see how it differs from some of the other um, level up services that um, Laura was talking about, um, because it sounds like it might be a good fit for your son. Thank you. Yes, and they are working on um, DDS, BRS, and they are working on training more for competitive employment. That's last I heard, so. Yes, yes, they are. It takes a long time because it's it a complex process, but yes. they're working on it. Customized employment, you said, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Customized, mm -hmm. okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I'm not sure if on the 26th, if the community practice will be discussing customized employment, but I know they're gonna be talking about different options and different service providers. So it might be good to also look at that. And I, I would suspect that um, even if you brought up the question, there would be some people there who would know a little bit more about it than perhaps Laura and I do. <laughs> Yes, and I believe the American Jobs, don't quote me on this, but they were looking at getting someone from the American Job Centers in that session. Someone asked, is the April 26 sign up through the CERC? Yes, yes. Um, it's on the CERC's um, calendar and you can sign up that way. Um, but the it's, link, actually, it's actually through, through EastCon, through, isn't it? It's through EastCon, but CERC has it on their calendar, or they did at one point. And the PowerPoint has the actual link. Let me see if I can actually put, I'll just put the link into the chat just to make it easier. Okay. We have, we have someone with the hands up, I think Anita, if you want to mute it. Hi, um, I just have maybe more of a, a comment and is there, I, I, I don't, th I think I know the answer to it, but like, I hate to say like a one-stop shop, you know, like one door that we could go to that can assist, you know, like, a, okay, you should be contacting this agency and this, because it's, you know, every time I do a lot of these, just so, you know, even if I get one little piece of knowledge, sometimes I'm very confused because I, you know, okay, we're in transition and he's been, my child's been part of Level Up. And then when I went to Voc Rehab, they said, I'll oh, stay with the school system, but then you have DDS and then you have to apply for Medicaid. And then it's just- You have to qualify for each and every one of those. Yeah, and you know, I, and I think I can't, I don't know if it was a CPAC thing. They were talking about like some states have like this one door that you enter or, or whatever, I don't know if, if the, what the blanket agency is, where they, you know, you go in, you have a, a, a child that has a, a disability, say, you know, DDS eligible, SSI eligible. But if you don't, we could always miss, like, I feel like I'm always like, oh, I never knew about that. And I just wish that there would be that one place where you could go and say, oh, you need to do this for your child. And I know that sounds like a big ask, but just to give, I mean, this for, for me is, is, is a new journey because my other two are typical. And then you go there and it's like, oh, you were supposed to apply for SSI. And then when you get SSI, you can't get a caseworker for DDS if you don't apply for Medicaid. So I right. just- Right. So I, if there's, Connecticut doesn't have anything like that? Um, I think the closest thing would be the der der determination disability services through uh, Department of Aging and Disability Services, not to be confused with DDS. Um, you could, 
many families go through two on one and then they filter them out that way, but there's no agency that just does like a needs assessment and then automatically links the family to all the different resources or state agencies. Yeah, I just wish there was like, you know, I hate it, like a, a flow chart to say, okay, well, if your child is DDS eligible, then, you know, you should do this, this, it, you know, because, you know, like I said, right. um, it's, it's complicated. And then you throw SSI in there, fight with them to get your child, you know, you know, determined yeah. eligible for SSI, then SSDI. And I just feel like, oh, but it's a lot. It is a lot for sure. And, and you're not the only person to say this. A lot of families feel the same way. It's very confusing. And then there's el eligibility requirements. And do they meet this eligibility? No, then they have to go here. And it, it can yeah, be very so it's just, confusing and yeah, frustrating. Yeah, you just don't want to miss out on, you know, like level up. I mean, we were fortunate enough because they brought it in in the high school. But um, I don't know if I would have known about that from BRS, you know about what that that service was you know that um and again i had to reach out again because once we have a new transition program like why is level up now all of a sudden not dealing with our children anymore and then maybe it was covid or whatever but now we have them back involved a little bit it's yeah. just it's there's it's just so many important things that you just don't want to like right. not do one thing right and I don't want to speculate why level up services, it, you know, could have been COVID, it could have been staffing, there could be many, many different reasons. But again, nothing under the WIOA um, would supersede the local school district's responsibility to provide transition services through special education, through IDEA. I would just say that BRS had benefits counselors that know a lot of the different types of programs and services that are available to individuals with disabilities. Okay. Um, and they can be accessed either through BRS or if you are, if your child is registered with DDS, I believe DDS can also get you access to the benefits counselors and it, and it's, there is no one one stop shopping. I mean, we have right. such a thing, but it doesn't really act that way. And it's not for people with disabilities. That's what the American Job Centers are supposed to be. Um, right. But they aren't for people with disabilities. Um, so I would go through the American Job Center. I mean, the um, benefits counseling. Um, and that's have, you said it under the aging and disability department. Yes, yes. It and okay. it has a it has a new name and I can't remember it off the top of my head. Okay. But if you just yep. say benefits counselors, they'll know who you're talking about. Yes. And I just dropped in the chat kind of like a little snippet about the benefit counselors and the contact. Um, oh, perfect. Thank you yeah. so much. Yep. Appreciate it. They were under the it gets very confusing because there's disability mm -hmm. determination, there's the benefit counselors, there's all sorts of information and, and then this is, state uses the same acronym at times just to confuse yeah. them. or they change it once you get used to it um you know I, I was I was just getting used to doors and then they changed it to Department of Aging and Disability Services so I have to remember it as dads in my head um as the acronym <laughs> no but I appreciate it you know the CPAC I, I you know they provide a wealth of information for us so I appreciate all that you do and thank you. and I bother you you folks all the time so um, I'm thankful not a for bother that. not a bother happy to do so and I'm still learning I'm new as the transition coordinator I'm taking over for Beth Real even though she's still doing it too so it's it's a lot to learn and even though I've been doing it for years there's just so much more to learn it is but you know what like I said if we take one thing away from each one of these meetings you know I think we're ahead of the game you know so thank you you're welcome thank you yeah, I think we're going to take away the customized <laughs> what you were talking like. about. Yeah, I think we're going to, that's probably going to be best for, for Max. So we're going to, I think we're going to look into that a little bit further. Just, so know, if, just know if you bring it up to your district, they may look at you like you have six heads. <laughs> <laughs> they, do, they do that anyways. We ask a lot of questions, <laughs> but 
we don't always understand everything. It's confusing. Because for them, it means money because they're not training <laughs> for them. It means that they're not trained in customized employment. So they have to bring in somebody who is. Yes. Uh-huh. We'll get to the bottom of it. Max is yeah. happy just to be taking the bus. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> he's so excited about that. So he's yeah. happy. We'll figure it out. Thank you very much for this evening. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Take care. Okay. No other questions? I don't okay. see Tana chat. Nope. So thank you all. Be, absolutely. So our next Transition Tuesday in April, we'll be having our Youth Advisory Board speaking to um, self-advocacy skills and preparing for this your young adult for college and also how to advocate while they're in high school. So look forward to seeing you all then. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night.